Meantime, President Trump today taking what he says is a big step to keep our elections safe. He signed an executive order. It streamlines the process to impose sanctions on foreigners who interfere in our elections. Comes amid criticism of the president for not taking the issue seriously enough in the past and his past denial that the Russians meddled the last time around. Meanwhile, another potential twist in the Mueller investigation. The former independent counsel, Ken Starr, who led that investigation into or led the investigation into former President Clinton's sexual misconduct. He said this earlier today. I think a president can be indicted, but that is not the position of the Justice Department traditionally going back to the Nixon Ford era and continuing through President Clinton's uh, tenure. Hmm. Can be indicted. So is the president immune or should he be worried? Our panel's here tonight to talk about it all. Greg Gutfeld show correspondent Kat Timpf is here this evening. Bullseye brief author Adam Johnson joins us and a liberal radio talk show host, Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall, all here. So you guys got to take it easy. I'm my first time hosting Kennedy, so you're I don't want to let her doing down. A great job. Well, well, I mean, there's no other choice. At this point. <laughs> here, nobody else here. So the whole studio. Um, let's see. So we could start with a couple of things. This election interference. The president had been criticized so much, uh, Kat, for not doing enough. It almost kind of brings to mind this idea of there's a two track presidency where the president says one thing, but his administration has actually been tough on these issues. And today, I guess, is another example with this executive order. What do you make of it? Absolutely. In the past, when he's been giving speeches or in a press conference, he has been a little wary to really call out Russia. And we all, of course, remember him standing next to Putin and not calling out Russia and Helensky. We all remember that. Yeah. But this is a very important action. And I don't think that anyone should have any sort of problem with it. I feel like this is something that we should all be able to unite and agree around mm -hmm. that we don't want foreign um, actors meddling in our elections and that this is a positive step towards stopping that. We should all be able to unite around this as a positive thing that the president did today. Except that you got to remember, uh, the liberals are going to pick him apart for anything he says, even if he makes a step in the right direction. You know, I mean, if he puts his right hand out, they'll say you should shake with your left hand if he puts a left. You know, I mean, it's the, unfortunately, that's the world we live in. But you're right. It seems so obvious. Just do it. And he did it. Well, well let's be the liberal here on the panel. Um, Go, raise and, your hand. And, and, and unless, <laughs> yes, thank Wait, you. Wait, is this the outnumbered show? <laughs> <laughs> the, that's tomorrow. Right. <laughs> unless, Sen unless Senator Marco Rubio is uh, a liberal, and a Democrat, he and right. many other uh, Republicans are actually not in favor of what the president's done because this is not only a day late and a dollar short, or let me be more specific, a mandate short. You there mean they should not, have done something the last time and not, around no, about not the just, Russians. Exactly, but not just that. This does not go for, far enough. This is not a mandatory sanction. This goes through a bunch of uh, hoops that they have to jump through. Right. There are too many outs, if you will. And so both Democrats and Republicans, right. not just liberals, are not in favor with the president. Right, let me couple not tough enough. A couple of other things while we have you all here. The Ken Starr comments today got some attention. He did say, Adam, that he, yeah. even though he claims a president can be indicted, that you, not right now under current Justice Department guidelines, which we know, he just feels that a president should be able to be indicted. I don't know if this moves the needle on anything. What do you think? Uh, no, I don't I don't think it does, and the fact that uh, Mueller hasn't been able to uh, drum up anything specific to make it stick to the president in two years tells you that they're going to have an awfully hard time doing it. Right. They need to just move on with this whole thing. I'm sorry. She's shaking her head, this Leslie. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I have to shake my head because if you want the truth, you shouldn't have a time limit. That We, the American people, freedom, democracy, and truth are owed that. Uh, the Watergate, it took over two years. Uh, but Ken Starr is right. If you look at the Constitution, it's really unclear. It depends on uh, who you ask. I think that right. is something that has to be cleared up. And as Ken Starr said, there are two presidencies, both Nixon and Clinton, in which they didn't indict. But once a president leaves office, all bets are off. Right. No, we've known that all along. Those are the, what the guidelines apply to a president in office. All right. Before we wrap it up, just a quick word on politics. We'll start with you, Kat, on this, because even some big time Republicans, Mitch McConnell comes to mind, are sounding like they're worried about the midterms. Quinnipiac had a plus 14 on the generic ballot for the Dems on the House side. Some are even worried about the Senate side. How do you see things playing out tonight as we speak? Well, I'm not sure. It's hard to say. It's pretty, I'm pretty confident that the GOP is going to struggle because it's typical for the party where there's the incumbent president to lose ground in the midterms. That's a typical thing. Mm -hmm. And also we're seeing a huge uh, uh, not a, a voter enthusiasm gap between the Democrats yeah. and the Republicans. Re Republican enthusiasm is high compared to previous years. Voter enthusiasm is high compared to previous elections, compared to most previous elections. Right. But it's still not quite as high as the Democrats is. And Any that's what they're going to struggle with. Anybody think the Republicans lose the Senate? 
No, absolutely not. In fact, I think actually the Republicans can hold the House. Really? Four percent GDP is a powerful tonic. I think people are going to vote with their pocketbooks. That's a tough one. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, the way the numbers look, you might end up and, being right. And by the way, the other thing, you know, the generic ballot, I know the generic ballot says that he ought to take the House. He'll keep this, or I should say the uh, GOP will uh, yep. uh, uh, keep the Senate, uh, lose the House. But the fact is, there's nothing generic about Donald Trump. And there's nothing <laughs> generic about this election. It was wrong in 2016. Right, really that's, what a lot right of, uh, well, that's what a lot of Republicans are counting on. All right, CBS getting rocked by another bombshell report tonight. The network announcing 60 Minutes executive producer Jeff Fager was fired, terminated effective immediately for sending what appears to be a threatening text message to a reporter over her coverage of the sexual misconduct claims that had already been written about and made against him. Fager reportedly wrote to CBS News reporter Jerrica Duncan, quote, there are people who lost their jobs trying to harm me, and if you pass on these damaging claims without your own reporting to back them up, that'll become a serious problem. Fager's also uh, been accused himself of sexual harassment, which is what Duncan was reporting on in the first place. He denies that and says the texts were harsh but fair. All right, the panel's back. Um, Leslie, you want to start this off? I mean, this was unbelievable to see this actually put in writing tonight. We had heard the allegations, which are separate against Jeff Fager, but the reporter reporting on those allegations gets that text. Uh, and we were just talking about this. Okay. Uh, we are in a Me Too movement uh, time in our lives, and as a woman, I think, long overdue. Um, secondly, it, you just don't. I was saying, my mother's watching. She's going to love that I say this. My mother said, you don't write anything down. You don't want the rest of the world to read. And it's right. so true. And especially yeah, now in the age of Twitter and everything, you know, you just you just don't do that. He should know better. But but it's the it's not just writing it down it's what he said threatening an individual and you have these allegations well, against the you to begin with kind of point of all this cat and then we've heard this from from women and others that say that uh, you know we're afraid we might lose our jobs if we say something that's literally just about what he said in the text. And that is a very real fear and a very real problem. These men are predators who have power, and then they use it to take advantage of women who they know don't have that power and that they can wield that power over them. I'm glad to see he's gone. I'm always glad to see someone gone when they're, when they're caught doing something like this because it's been a long time coming. These yeah. kind of men have been abusing this kind of power for far too long, and women haven't had the ability to do anything about it. And it's really great. I think that people are finally starting to listen. Well, it is amazing, Adam, how this business has been has been changed over the last couple of years. Of course, yep. we know about it at Fox, and it happened at NBC. And here, here at CBS, which we're talking about tonight, not only Jeff right. Fager, just days after Les Moonves, who ran the entire network, and of course, Charlie Rose. Charlie Rose. Um, again, another uh, giant of media. And the only thing I can say, first of all, is ladies, I apologize. Mm -hmm. Right? As a guy, it just, mm -hmm. it upsets me. And for the guys out there, stop doing it. All right. It's not it doesn't work anymore. Just stop it. Cut it out. You know, there's just no place for treating women any way other than how you want to be treated yourself. Treat your mother, your sister the same way. Yeah, it just doesn't hold water anymore. And you know what? These guys should be called out. I'm Never glad did. they're being called out. Never I just have. want to point Never. out that he's Never. single and all the women watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> I will tweet his number later. No, I'm just joking. That was that was lovely. All right, that was guys. lovely. Thanks, Adam. It's from Thanks. the heart. I mean Leslie Cat. Good to see all of you.